Now, the invention of Wary's needle by Sir Janos Varus, an internist working in Hungary on tuberculosis, launched an era of laparoscopy. The first laparoscopic hysterectomy was performed by Henry Reek in 1989, and laparoscopic hysterectomy carries an edge over open hysterectomy because it provides a better magnification of anatomy and pathology. So, the three main considerations are the ergonomics, which is the man machine interface the task analysis and the minimizing the injury and the additions. So, when we analyze the task, we have to identify the target. So, a target in a total laparoscopic hysterectomy is a uterine artery, the structure which is most vascular. The target in a salpingectomy or salpingophrectomy is the uh, ovarian artery in the infundibular pelvic ligament. So, we have to place the pots depending on the position of the target. So, when we apply the baseball diamond concept of trocar placement, the target in total laparoscopic hysterectomy is the uterine artery. So, what are the classifications of uh, laparoscopic uh, assisted hysterectomy? We say type 1 when we just do a diagnostic laparoscopy and then uh, proceed with the vaginal hysterectomy. Type 2 when we do laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy when the round ligament is taken laparoscopically and the other procedures are done from below. In the 3, we call it as laparoscopic hysterectomy and uh, we take down the uterosacral ligament, the tubo ovarian ligament, the uterovesical fold laparoscopically and the rest procedure is done uh, vaginally. In the total laparoscopic hysterectomy, even the vaginal cuff is taken down laparoscopically and no procedure is done vaginally. In the type 5, uh, there is laparoscopic supracervical or a subtotal hysterectomy. Type 6 is vaginal hysterectomy with a laparoscopic wall suspension. Type 7 is laparoscopic hysterectomy with lymphadenectomy in the uh, pelvis or aortic lymph nodes. Type uh, 8 is laparoscopic hysterectomy with lymphadenectomy and omentectomy. And type 9 is laparoscopic radical hysterectomy with lymphadenectomy, which is done in cases of malignancies like CA cervix and CA endometrium. Now, uh, coming to the tray trolley which has been said so we can we should keep it minimal and simple we should there should be no crowding of instruments and uh, they are arranged in a sterile cart and we have laparoscopic graspers we have bipolar scissors and we have this suction irrigation cannula here and we have trockers 10 mm and 3 5 mm ports and we have uh, these instruments which will be used for port closure and there is a syringe with 5 mm used for checking the position of the various needle. So, preoperative evaluation is done to identify the risk factors. So, we have to look for lung disease, cardiac disease, previous abdominal surgeries, history of coagulation disorders, previous history of anesthesia related complications, history of any dentures or prosthetic devices because we are going to give general anesthesia and previous operative records should be looked into. Examine the head and neck, lung and heart, vascular and neurological examination, airway, vital signs and abdominal examination to look for any previous scars and to decide on alternate port entry if the umbilical port has already been used for a previous laparoscopic surgery. Basic blood investigations include hemoglobin, blood urea creatinine, electrolyte, liver function test, coagulation profile, BTCT, PC, PT, APTT, ECG, chest x-ray, serology, ultrasound and urine analysis and tests obtained within 6 months of surgery is acceptable and uh, expect Expectations from the patient should be counsel the patient and take a consent from the patient and explain to the patient the risk of perioperative morbidity and mortality, tell her about the post-op pain, recovery, length of stay and take a detailed informed written voluntary consent regarding the chance of any conversion to laparotomy or chance of any injury to bowel or bladder. So, surgical technique, it uh, is classified depending upon the extent of dissection done laparoscopically. So, we should be very thorough with the anatomy and we have to maintain the sterile precautions in the assembly of the laparoscopic instruments. So, to be thorough with the anatomy, we should uh, look at the coronal section of the female pelvis through the vital structures and we should see the relationship of uterine artery and when we are putting a vaginal manipulator, so, we have to keep into consideration that when the vaginal uh, manipulator is pushed inside, the uterine arteries are displaced laterally. So, a little bit pushing in of the roomies will help us to um, minimize the injuries to the ureters and the adenexal structures.